Boys, global street food dish number one, lift the cloche. This is the best thing we do. Videos. This is the best thing. Go! <gasps> oh! You got us Donna meat and chips. Yes! It, wait a minute, it's far too early for this. Dig in, boys. Get tasting. Get identifying. Get guessing. Get. Oh my goodness. I'm at least 10 beers too sober for this. <laughs> oh! The garlic sauce. Mm. Okay. So mm. let's let's be clear. This isn't this isn't this is a global street food thing. But this was made famous on the streets of Potter's Bar. <laughs> I can't I can't agree. In our world, growing up, the Istanbul in, in Potter's Bar. <laughs> Silver Jubilee. Silver Jubes. Yeah. Yeah. Was the best version of this actually. Classic. Yeah. This particular dish is probably mm. our most recommended street food dish we've ever had on the channel. Yeah. Mm. Everyone recommended it. Mm -hmm. I'll Everyone. give you a clue. It's not from the UK. Mm. What's difficult about this is that it could be from so many different places. Mm -hmm. Because where I think it originates from is potentially different from where it's most popular. Yes. So this fast food dish consists of French fries, topped with doner or kebab meat, melted cheese, and a variety of condiments and vegetables, often served in a takeout container at takeout eatery specializing in shawarma or kebabs. Mm. Some variations of this dish include ingredients like raisins, olives, and hard boiled eggs, creating a unique combination of sweet and savory flavors. So that has sweet chili sauce in it as well to give you all of those flavour profiles. Mm, it's absolutely fabulous. And I would say, on behalf of whichever country this is, I would like to apologise on behalf of England mm. because we have reduced it yeah. in our minds to, to just the, food, the, the food that you have after you've been drinking at the end of the night. Okay. And by reducing it, we are doing it a massive disservice. I think this is everything Everything I love about food, full stop, in a cardboard box. Mm. Right, you've got a, star a starchy, fatty, beautiful base in the chips. Top with the cheese. Mm. Cheesy chips is a win-win all day long. The fact then you've got the Donna meat, an incredibly fatty, delicious piece of meat. And then the salad. Pickly, refreshing, garlicky. It's just so rewarding. Uh, it's like, it's a job well done. I feel like I've achieved something. Mm -hmm. Boys, time to get out your whiteboards. I don't make a stop. guess. And you know how this works. We give you three <laughs> points for a correct answer and one for the closest answer to the correct answer. Oh, that's so good. I just have to think about it a little, yeah, a little longer. Mm. Right on your whiteboards. <laughs> I locked in an answer so that I can quickly go back and eat some more. <laughs> <laughs> Reveal your answers in three, two, one. Germany and Syria. Jay, why Germany? Particularly Berlin, I know is incredibly popular for its kebabs and Donner kebabs. They have the, the kebab stands everywhere, massive long queues. They're like gourmet kebabs as yeah, well. Yeah, and I don't know whether it's this particular style with the cheesy chips and things, but I do know they have popularised the Donna kebab massively. Barry, Syria. Yeah, I, I wanted, uh, my head straight went straight towards Tokyo because that's, again, where I know Donna kebab, where they originated. And I thought, actually, that felt too obvious, so therefore I just went to the, a neighbouring country. Okay, good logic. Um, boys, I can reveal that this dish is called Capsalon. <laughs> And it's from Holland. No! But yes! So close. <laughs> Think you're closest. So, <laughs> Jay, your guess of Germany is 358 miles away from Holland. <sighs> Baz, unfortunately for you, you're 2,027 miles away Quite from Syria. Far. I'm not going to laugh though, because Very in wrong. the grand scheme of things, yeah. yeah. So yeah, Cap Salon is attributed to a local hairstylist in Rotterdam who frequented a nearby shawarma restaurant and requested a distinctive combination of ingredients that eventually became known as cap salon, translating to hair salon in Dutch. Wow. This creation rapidly gained popularity and has since become a well-loved fast food, street food item. It is such an amazing combination of all of the best 
and probably worse things for you. So, one nil to Jay. Let's move well on to played. dish two. Well played. We haven't finished this one yet, no. actually. So. We'll keep this. <laughs> one more bit. Have a lift, have a look, have a taste, have a guess. Please be as good as the last round. Oh. <laughs> Why would you? Come on, children! But they wouldn't go on. They wouldn't go on. Right, so that's we needed, how we're doing. And we it. needed six. <laughs> You're asking me if we need six of these. <laughs> Who are you? You've changed. <laughs> okay. I mean, there's one obvious answer that comes straight away, but I'm going to guess it's not that. Or is it? Which one? I've got, I've got, there's a few places I could go straight up by just looking at it. Well, yeah, I could throw one ball to Italy. Yeah, I could play another Arancini. one. Arancini. I could play, chuck another one towards Brazil. Cosina? Cosina. 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 Or, and I could throw another one just up in the air and have Scott Jack. Yeah, it could be a Scott Jack, <laughs> you're right. We could go anywhere with this. What's inside? I know which I'm throwing it that way at the moment. Potato. I can see capers. Is that raisin? Raisins and beef mince. Was a mince? Yeah, correct. Beef. So the meat Garlic. and onion mixture is called picadillo. It's not what I was expecting, but it is delicious. It's, it's serving the same purpose as a cascina, if that's how you say it, a scotch egg and an arangini. Yeah. Like a handheld yeah. fried bowl of Goodness. Goodness. Yum in my mouth. Yeah. Mm. It's savoury, but I like it's quite it's savoury, salty and sweet. But it's got it, it is balancing all those really well. It's got like a sweetness of tomato ketchup as well. Interesting. You taste any sort of like individual spicing that could perhaps give you give you a region? Spice is usually kind of the giveaway from these things, but I'm not getting a specific blend. So I can tell you these contain paprika, cayenne pepper. Cumin. It's not helpful, is it? Not helpful at all. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's delicious. Mm. And one of those things like you have to get the, the ratios right because if, if there was too much potato in there, it would come quite stodgy. Yeah. Time to have a think and lock in an answer, boys. Reveal your answers in three, two, one. We've Excuse got it. Costa Rica Ooh. and Perth. Mm. Per no. No. <laughs> it's Peru. Peru. <laughs> Okay, so this dish is called Papa's Rayanus and is enjoyed all over Latin American countries, including Peru and the Dominican Republic. But this specific one is from Cuba. Cuba! <laughs> Do I not get a, 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 a kindness an tap on the back? An honourable... Yeah, you get an honour... Well done. That guess was honourable but it means nothing when it comes to points. Wow. So, um, so yeah, really popular across lots of Latin American countries. This particular blend and recipe is Cuban. So Cuba is the correct answer. So I went for Peru because potato and like delicate yeah, yeah. spicing. Uh, yeah. There were the spices that were there, but it was very well balanced. And I thought, actually, I know how much Peru and potatoes goes together yeah. and delicate flavors and things. And just, Good logic. Like, <laughs> well, you kind of got it right, but you didn't. Baz, why'd you pick Costa Rica? Um, similar. I went. I started off in Brazil. Then I went. You know what? There was a potato element. Go to Peru. But then there was a kind of like the the the, the sweetness and the flavours there reminded me more kind of Caribbean and North America. So I kind of picked the little bit in between Mexico and and South America. Central America. Is that Central America. I suppose it is. <laughs> <laughs> Middle America. Yeah. And as a result, Baz, you take the point. With 909 mi yes! miles away, Jay, unfortunately, 2,457. That's quite a long way again. But what's mentioned in the, in the answer? I feel like we should give you half a point. No! Because, because you kind of got it, but <laughs> you didn't. But then, them, not the rules. I know, but. No, no that's never, that has never been the case. Don't but you dare, Michael. I'm hamstrung by Ebba's rules, but I feel like you should get. Half a point. So 1-1 one, one it stands, leading into dish number three. Oh, more deliciousness. I'm very excited for this one. Yeah? Oh, I, the clock. I need to make more space. <laughs> you need to poo. Go. <laughs> That's not what I said. <laughs> I, I need to do a poo. Go for it. Oh, wow. Okay. 
Okay, we've got a, a meaty, fatty filling in... Flatbread? Flatbread, yeah. So this dish is a savoury stuffed pancake, or flatbread, oh, oh, filled with a oh. mixture of ingredients like minced meat, eggs, onions, and spices. Seeing a running theme here, aren't we? Mm. Mm. Put delicious spiced meat and stuff in bread or carbs. The spice is taking me somewhere very different though. Interesting. Mm. I can't tell you where it's taking me right now, but it's got... Yes, Jay. The lime's throwing me. He's throwing me as well. Mm, but it does do something, the lime. It does, doesn't it? Mm. And I think it brings out some more of the spice. Mm. So in terms of constructing this dish, oh, no. a dough's initially crafted from flour, water, and sometimes eggs. It's then rolled into really thin sheets. The meat, typically beef or chicken, onions, eggs, and assortment of spices is applied to one sheet before being folded into a parcel. It's then cooked on a griddle or skillet until achieving a crisp golden brown exterior. It looks amazing from here. It smells amazing from here. And can you throw me a bit? It's phenomenal. It's proper street food. Yeah. yeah. I was surprised there's no cheese in it. I was expecting yeah. cheese pull or something. That You know where it's folded over? You get that top layer with mm. nothing in it. Mm. Cheese, just a little tip for you. And tomato sauce. <laughs> you made pizza. No, it's a pizza. <laughs> be it. It's really... I expected it to be crispier, but it's not. It's mm. fluffy and bready mm. and doughy. That is awesome. Mm. Okay. But I'm not confident on I the continent. I have no idea. Yeah. You don't know the country. Most of them, I think we can narrow down usually to a continent. Here's a geographical caveat. Whilst we're looking for a specific country because of the nature of this game, so this particular recipe is from this specific country, this dish has undergone so many regional variations, not very ha helpful for you, but they've been adapted to like diverse culinary influences and preferences, and is basically enjoyed in f loads of different forms with lots of different fillings and accompaniments, holding cultural significance across very many different nations. So if we haven't mentioned yours, we're very sorry, but we do appreciate it. I think that well, gives like us it. more of a chance of getting it right. Yeah, and we, we can't get we can't go wrong now. We can't, we can't offend anybody. No, no. That's all down to him. Yeah. I'm not confident at I'm all. I'm not confident at all either. Answers locked in. Reveal in three, two, one. Nepal and Pakistan. <laughs> We've basically got either side of <laughs> India. <laughs> <laughs> Why? Because you both thought India was too obvious. I didn't think it was Indian. No. But I did think that region with some of the spicing. <clears throat> It's obviously a very big region, but I try to look just outside, but not too far away. On the periphery. On the periphery it of... could take of, some of that influence yeah, in the region. Yeah, but also if I'm wrong, then hopefully not too far wrong. Okay, Barry. I too played it safe. I felt like it had the spices, the cumin and the coriander seeds felt of... felt Indian to, to me, to my limited palate. Well, I can reveal that this dish is called Murtabak, <coughs> and it's from... Yemen. Oh, oh! So another one that's very close. Your guesses were there were 500 miles. <laughs> that's a big area! In, in your guesses. Wow. So, murtabak is commonly found in South Asian and Southeast Asian cuisines. People enjoy it at different times, but it's especially loved as a street food snack at breakfast. In some oh, places, yeah. it's a go-to choice for breaking the fast during Ramadan. It's also found in the Arabian Peninsula, evolving through cultural exchanges and trade, became a popular street food in those South and Southeast Asian countries like India, Malaysia, Singapore, Indonesia, and Thailand. So it really does span far and wide. And the name itself, Murtabak, is believed to have come from the Arabic word Murtabak, meaning folded. And it's referring to its preparation method. And I am so sorry for all of that pronunciation and my <laughs> ignorance. That is delicious. Oh, yeah. Stonking. I, but you said there was only 500 miles. There's only 500 between. miles between both of your guesses. Barry's guess was 2,200 miles oh. away <laughs> from Yemen. Still, Still really far. Yeah. Jamie's guess, 2,761. <gasps> so Barry takes the point. It's a hollow win, that one. Fair play, because I probably would have gone down the similar lines. But Yemen it is. Yeah, what's fascinating is, if you drew a circle around all the places that it's found, you picked bang in the middle of that. So I'd actually say congratulations and well done. 
But mainly to me. But mainly to Barry, he takes a point. <laughs> Fourth and final round, boys. Jay, if you take a direct hit, you take the win. Otherwise, best you can do is draw. Here we go. Lift the cloche. Oh. Wow, but also no. Why no? It's, it's not going to be what I think it is, is it? <laughs> I think I know what this is. Why do you know what this is? <laughs> I watched a video yesterday and I think it was in it. What video did you watch? I'm not going to tell you. Can I watch the video? Away. Just put it on the same page? Is it, is it what I think it is? And while you're eating it, I'll tell you how it's made. Spread out seasoned sushi rice on a sheet of seaweed, adding varieties of fillings like vegetables, meat, pickled radish, rolling tightly before slicing into pieces. Are there many versions of this? I think, yeah, there are different varieties of you can put any this filling with in a it. combination, but we've chosen this particular com combination to try and give you a bit of a stiff. If I were to say, is this as common as a sandwich? I'm not going to say. What's the deal? So this, <laughs> this particular dish has gained popularities in this country's culture and as convenient and easily transportable food, commonly enjoyed during celebrations and for quick on the go meals. And it's said that this dish represents the spirit, unity and togetherness amongst friends and family. I think you can put any things you want in there. It's just an incredible vehicle to carry it all. Um, it's beautifully seasoned. I love, I love the, the meat in there. It's humble. It's humble street food, it feels like. Like the nori and the mm. sushi rice are a vehicle for packing in delicious flavour. But that particular combination of ingredients, we hope will steer you in a direction. Here we go, time to knock it in. Jay, it's all on you, mate. I know. I've got options in my mind. Lock in one of those options that's in your mind. What if it's the wrong one? Then you won't get a point. Right. <laughs> <laughs> you locked in the answers. Boys, reveal them in three, two, one. Oh, oh no! Yes! <laughs> Barry's taking the win. Oh! <laughs> but the question is, how close were you? I can reveal that this dish is called Kimba. Yeah, it is what I thought it is. And is from South Korea. Yeah! Yes! yes! Take well it. played, a double bully. Oh! So oh. kimbap is a Kore Korean dish consisting of seaweed wrapped rice rolls with various ingredients such as vegetables, meat, and pickled radish, and is believed to have potentially originated during the Japanese occupation of Korea in the first half of the 20th century. Now, Koreans have adapted the Japanese roll and added their own twist using sesame oil to season the rice instead of Japanese rice vinegar. Could you actually taste that? Yes. But the bigger thing for me was the beef because it tasted more, I want to say, barbecue, bull, bull but, goggy, but yeah. it, it had more of, yeah. yeah. Right, so I can come clean. I watched Josh feed this to his Italian friend in Korea. What from, oh, Josh, Korean, Korean English from Jolly, yeah, yeah. Korean, Korean Englishman did a video on this yesterday. That's why you should always research before this format. It because works! Barry takes three points. Jamie takes three points. <laughs> the Barry first wins. time! Five, four. Well done. And a half. <laughs> <laughs> oh, now I can have my half, half point. Half point. <laughs> <laughs> We're so lucky to sit here and try Absolutely. these foods from around the world. And thank you for recommending them. But if you have any more, please let us know downstairs. And make sure you check out the playlist to see more of us eating global street food. And if you like the video, like the video. Please.